We're only nine minutes late this time. Um, no, the, the, the audience is nine minutes early. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 163 for Thursday, the 22nd of February, 2018. This is the show where two lifelong friends and their guests celebrate all things geek. I'm Amos, that douchebag on the opposite side of the screen for me is Kent. If you're on audio only, he's in the center channel right next to me because he likes to crowd my space. And uh, he's going to tell us how he's been doing because, well, I'm I'm just jabbering right now. What's up, man? Hey, dude. Um, I'm glad to be here. It's Thursday. It's Ritual Misery. It's my favorite time of the week. We are not alone, though. We have with us the one, the only, the drunk kid that games, Curly. What's up, man? I love the intro. Yeah, I appreciate it. Uh, hi, I'm so happy to be here. You guys, uh, you guys came over on my podcast a couple weeks ago, maybe mm. months ago. Mm. I don't know when. Uh, is it been mentioned oh, that I drink it was, yet? Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it, it was Autumn's birthday, so that would be the 19th of November. Yes. Yeah, so if I start, if I start uh, gauging my lifespan based on DKG Welp episodes, then I get <laughs> cross-eyed and scared. Uh, but yeah, no, you guys are great, and uh, the audience had a blast having you around, and so uh, we always we thought immediately right afterwards, why not do the same thing in the opposite direction, mm. and I come over to your guys' little house and see what it's all about over here. Uh, nowhere near as fun and way more sober, but uh, we like to call it home anyway. So <laughs> that's that's where we're sitting. Um, hey, Kent, how was your week, dude? Um, You know, busy like normal, but uh, I, I've been noticing a trend in my my neighborhood, and I'm not sure if I if I want to jump on this one or not. Every house almost, I would say at least every other house, probably closer to, to two thirds of the houses on my block are getting solar panels installed. Hmm. Uh, I, you know, I, sh- should I jump on that or like, is this a, is this like a cult thing that's, that's happening that I should avoid? <laughs> or, Some uh, real adult, adult talk. Like this is like, where should I put my 401k? Uh, <laughs> yeah, this is a, uh, this is so. You, you, you know, the, the, the nighttime is the right time, right? This is right. the Colts way of absorbing the sun. And that, that's how they're blocking it out now. They're like, they're no, we can't block you. We will use you instead. I yeah, do like, and- I do like <laughs> your, your, your first, uh, your first uh, uh, issue with it is that it might possibly be a secret underground cult that is saving <laughs> the planet or <laughs> getting free power. Yeah, no, fuck those guys that are wanting to like help the planet. Like, geez. Um, um, no, this, this yeah, is, no, it's pretty cool. I, I'm actually, I'm, I'm, I'm really interested in it. I think I'm going to research it myself and see like what the, uh, like return on investment is going to be. And, um, I don't know. Pretty cool. Are, are you guys into renewable energy at all? Um, I am way into it. In fact, I researched this not long after I bought my house when I moved up here to Alaska. And what it comes out to is you, you want to look at three things, the, the taxes you can write off, the power you can sell back and the amount of sunlight you're going to get. <clears throat> Yeah, and I'm gonna get a lot because I'm in New Mexico. Right. It's uh, but here in Alaska, like all summer long, we get nothing but sun, so we rarely use any electricity. Like our electricity bill is like forty bucks a month, in in the in the summertime, uh, because I mean, if you need light, you just open a window. If you need it to cool off, you just open a window. You know. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. in the yeah. winter winter time, it, it kind of crunches down a little bit, but there's there's not a lot of sunlight, so it wouldn't really help that much anyway. But I looked into it and. The thirty. Whenever you look at solar panels, you're looking at a thirty year span, because that's like the that's the lifespan of the solar panels before you have to start repairing them and replacing them and things like that. I would net eleven hundred dollars in the negative after all the stuff going on. Blah 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 blah. So to me, it's not cost effective. It's just a matter of how much am I willing to help the environment. And mm. in Alaska, they don't buy back power. Mm. Um. All the winter long, it's not going to help hardly at all, except during the day when you actually have sunlight. And in the summertime, it would help, but if I can't sell the power back, it's no major benefit to me. So for me, it's stored it, in batteries or yeah, yeah, exactly. And there's only so much, uh, only so much until until uh, uh, Elon Musk starts installing the batteries in my wall. There's not a whole lot of battery right. I can really do with it. So, uh, but I, I put a link in the show notes of the, one of the sites that I use to kick off my research. And according to that, you should totally put solar panels on your roof, dude. Yeah. Right on. All right. Um, yeah, definitely gonna look into that. <laughs> so I rent apartments. Um, so that's cool. Uh, <laughs> uh, but I, I do a little inside. My my uh, my friend, uh, lifelong friend Erica, uh, has. Um, well, we, uh, first of all, I live in California, 
uh, San Diego down Southern California, which means we have no snow and no downtime from the sun whatsoever. And California is completely uh, cool with buying back power and giving incentives for uh, everything in regards to solar. So there's a lot of incentives there. Um, she partnered with some company that technically owns the solar panels and handles her bill for her. And um, all that they require from her is that uh, if something crazy happens, uh, that they get alerted. And then two, uh, they have to plug them into their her network so mm-hmm. that they can report home. And she, as far as I understand, she doesn't get an electrical bill. I lived with her for a couple months and I was like, so when do you, when, when do I pay electricity? And she's like, I don't do that. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, okay, <laughs> whatever. Yeah. There, um, there's, there's so yeah. many different factors into it. Uh, and there's, you know, the big lobbies are, are totally against it because well, oil's where the money's at and you know, you gotta burn which, them dinosaurs. Yeah. And, and it kills me because up here in Alaska, we don't have like, we don't have a coal plant or an oil plant or anything else, a natural gas plant. We have like three nuclear plants that run like the entire state. One of imagine there's like one whale that they're just plugged into and the whale is just feeding <laughs> all the, the power. <laughs> Let's go. Um, yeah, I, I actually passed one of the nuclear, nuclear power plant plants on my way to work and it's way the hell down there. Like we don't have any power out here in the valley. It's all Anchorage based and they just kind of you know pump it out here. Um, but it just blows me away that even in the summertime, I can't sell the power back. It, it was one of those like defeating things. I was like all about it. You know, I got a house. I'm going to have solar power and we're going to be, you know, as off the grid as possible. I'll, I'll put a well in the backyard, you know? Uh, <laughs> no, no. Uh, uh, Burrow says you can't put a well where it's serviced by a public well. So can't do that. And, you know, I, I can't sell I, power I, back. I, I just, I'm just going to live here and just have a house. I understand it though. I mean, I guess like, you have reactors. They're like, we have enough power. Just keep, keep it. We don't want it. You don't, you know, get rid. We don't want your other other power. Um, we down here in San Diego tried to have a reactor, and then uh, uh, everything in that could possibly fail failed uh, yeah. legislatively, and uh, they just shut it down. So we just pay a crap ton of money for coal and bullshit like that. So it sucks. Over right. Here. And California of all places. That's that's really surprising. Well, what gets me is the entire time I lived in California, we had, you know, once in a while we'd have a brownout or whatever, like if there's an earthquake or a, a power plant went down, something like that, it'd be like this one brownout, right? And then was it the early 2000s? They had the rolling blackouts or the rolling brownouts mm-hmm. and shit like that because Enron was throttling the power going to the state to try to choke more money out of them and shit like that. Mm-hmm. And that put mm-hmm. the state of California into like panic mode. So now they'll buy power from any possible location they can get it, but they don't want to put any more power plants there. They're like they've they've decided we are going to import everything that we do from now on. <laughs> it's, there's there's nothing, and and Sunbun can attest to this for me. Uh, there's probably nothing that gets me more in an angry, salty mood than talking about the power in Southern California. <laughs> it is it is the most. I mean, I I'm not a big fan of uh of 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 crazy, overreaching, way too much uh bureaucratic government red tape stuff, and it's it's times twenty. The, the 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 power situation and, and it's all whiny baby fucking tantrum bureaucrat shit mm. with these companies back and forth over you know uh, it's your fault that the lightning struck here and your power lines weren't up to blah 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 and i guess we're gonna just not pay you and then okay well we're charging the interest and oh wait we'll just charge your users that and it's yeah. just the worst and then yeah like uh what was it uh palm desert has five thousand uh uh wind turbines out there um but then they won't let them build anymore because it's becoming a scenery thing. Like, are you kidding me? Nobody's out going out that way for scenery in the first place. <laughs> yeah, unless you're driving past El Centro or to El, no one's going to El Centro. Uh, like, it's just like that whole area could be used for all wind turbines and they look yeah. beautiful out there compared to nothing else that you're looking yeah. at. Cause it's all nothing. We well, got the entire, like, you know, the entire Mojave desert out there. Nobody can build anything out there cause nobody can live out there. There's, you, you go here to Phoenix. You could put up anything you want. There's nothing. Like, like, yep. Yeah. Yeah. What one gas station that's on an elevated platform in the middle of the highway that's elevated because the sand is so hot. Like just, just use use that. Put some solar panels out there. Put nothing but solar panels for miles out there, and you just have so much power. But no, can't do power that. Power the freaking country. Right. Exactly. <laughs> it's it's ridiculous. Um. So there's there's your answer, Kent. Uh, we don't know. <laughs> yeah, sorry. You, you, you asked the apartment renter to <laughs> nothing to worry about. Right. All, all right. So, if you guys weren't looking at solar panels all week, uh, Amos, what what were you up to? Like, what what, what distracted you from solar panels? Um. Uh, th- so there's a game called Mulaka that's coming out soon. 
I've heard of that. Yeah. Um, I, I've had Me the too. I've had the chance recently to play a little bit of it. Um, and I got to say that I'm going to play some more. That's that's about all I can say about it. Is I'm going to I'm going to keep playing because it's 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 interesting. Yeah. Uh, I I I will say the same thing because we can't really say much more than that. Yeah. Uh, other than the, the game is made by some folks that we've had on this show a few times. Mm-hmm. Uh, we met them back in 2015 at South by Southwest. Uh, really cool dudes. Uh, they they are uh, a small independent game developing company uh, that recently, I say recently, probably about what, a year ago, they got picked up by a major, uh, a major investor, I guess, mm-hmm. that um, uh, basically is paying them to be full-time game designers now. And uh, they put this game Malacca together. That's not only is it a cool game, but the concept of it is just really awesome. And that's what really got my attention when yep. we were talking to them at South by uh, basically it takes a little known tribe, uh, uh, from certain areas in Mexico that is, um, uh, I, I they're special. Uh, they are, um, <laughs> not in a bad way. They're, they're like, they're, oh, I don't want to give away, I don't want to give away too much about the, the storyline of the game. Right. Uh, but the, the story, it very much involves the history of this culture. Right. And, the attributes of of the people and it's 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 really awesome you know what how about in a few weeks we have these dudes on so that they can explain to everyone how awesome their game is we we, we can't kent uh we've already got them booked for the uh, for the for the end of march so it's gonna have to be oh. several weeks okay so sir all right so <laughs> bo- so a few weeks and then we'll have them on a few weeks after that yeah exactly you don't want them right after their launch anyways yeah they're no. all running around screaming yeah <laughs> <laughs> i've met devs that, that right after launch <laughs> yeah but what i will do is encourage people to check this game out uh lienzo.mx is their website that's mm-hmm. l-i-e-n-z-o lienzo.mx slash malaka takes you right to the link for their game uh, Malak is spelled M U L A K A. It is already available for pre-order. for pre-sale um, uh, for the Nintendo Switch and the Xbox One, and then it's going to be available here in a couple days for Steam and PS4. Um, which is definitely- which is funny because it actually comes out on Steam and PS4 the day before it comes out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. It's weird how they have the um, that, Curly. Uh, have, have you uh, have you had a chance to look at this yet? I've been looking at it. I haven't had a chance to play it. I was going to, um, I'm a sucker for, uh, early access to things mm. that I get exclusive rights to. So, uh, I can, I think I can say that you guys gave me a key. That's mm. cool. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, to check it out. Um, and, and what they're alluding to here is that the game is under NDA until it, it opens, uh, to the public. So until uh, a week from yesterday. So next week we'll tell you all about the game. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. So that, yeah, it's, so uh, oh, I, I have- figured, about it <laughs> i figured i'd take a weekend or this sometime this weekend to, to record some stuff of it and then i'll just put it up on the channel right when it unlocks from the nda so yeah. you know if it blows up it blows uh, you know all sh- rising waters raise all ships <laughs> so. um yeah and I, I i i can say that uh i mean you can look at my my steam account and see i've got about about an hour and a half into it and it's i'm enjoying yep. it it's, no, it's I'm fun. glad I'm glad their steam page is open here because what i wanted to say is it, it does look beautiful it, the, the the smoothness of the the uh, action animations and whatever and the fight uh, stuff yeah. looks great. It's got a very, uh, a ver- uh, I don't say a very unique cause that's, that's stupid. If it's unique, it's unique. It's, it's, mm-hmm. it's a litmus, but um, I haven't, I haven't played a game with this art style in, in my gaming time. And it's very interesting to see how they've, they've incorporated that art style into the story and things like that. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. It looks like it's going to, it's got a lot of love made into it. I, I, I play games literally for half a living. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and uh, at this point I can, I can tell when you, you can tell when a developer is just making a game that they have in their mind versus when they're actually just kind of really enjoying themselves and showcasing, uh, it comes out, it just comes out in the way that the art is done. And you can just see with some of the screenshots and some of the, uh, the gift animations, uh, that, that they actually cared about it and they like it. And so hopefully yeah. it, it pans out for them. Um, and then I'm a big sucker for anything that's actually got like a, uh, a real like I love lore, and then I I, I always realize that uh, our actual reality has a shit ton of lore. And so if you can teach me a real like life story that's uh, based on stuff, uh, Apotheon was one of the other ones that did that kind of thing. It was a side-scrolling thing that actually told real like you know mythology stories and shit. It was really cool. 
Um, so yeah, I've been I've been playing that, and uh, I found some floors. <laughs> yeah, uh, I didn't I didn't know this. Well, I didn't know this before, but we actually have a floor in our bedroom. Oh my god, um, that so, is so out of the ordinary. Yeah, and, and and believe it or not, I mean, I I don't know how lucky we are to live in this house, but we also have a floor in the garage. Holy shit, dude! Yeah, that is amazing. Yeah, so we not like um just open air or or maybe even dirt, but like a, a real floor. Yeah, there, there, there's an actual surface under there if you move all the clothes out of the way and and the boxes and, and the random shit that just kind of accumulates over time, you move that out of the way. And, and there's actual carpet in our bedroom. Like it's nice carpet. Like you can put your toes in it and stuff. It's really nice. It's, it's wow. Um, so I'm, I discovered those two things in this house this weekend. I, I, I don't know if I didn't know that before, or if I had forgotten it, but either way, it was a nice discovery for both those rooms. Okay. Well, that's, uh, that's, that's great. So I, I, I take it. You did some, some pre spring cleaning then. Uh, we did some, Hey, we got a four day weekend and I'm tired of tripping over shit cleaning. So got it. That's always, <laughs> always nice. It's not it's, just it's, more, not just more laundry holding up more laundry holding up more laundry. <laughs> holding up. Yeah, that, no, that's what the treadmill is for. I actually, I, I, I literally found clothes that I had forgotten that I had. <laughs> no, there's a, there's a pile of laundry in the corner of my room. You can kind of see it peeking out over there. Uh, but I've, I, if there's times where I'm like, I fucking just need a sock. Like where? And I'll dig down and I'm like, I'll go back sizes in clothes. I'm like, what the fuck? Was this high school? Yeah. <laughs> How did this get here? Yeah. It was, I lived and, here for two years. And, and, the, and it was all clean laundry. Um, and I mean, in boxes, like we've got some shit from Amazon before Christmas time. So it kind of just found its way in there because we opened the box in a room and then we wrapped the presents, that kind of stuff, you know? So it was just like, just random stuff. It wasn't like filth. It was just messy. And it is... Like the, the, the kids walked in the room, the uh, autumn, our five-year-old walked in. And she goes, your guy's room is so big. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, uh, get out of here. Go clean your room. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, dude, you got to take pictures of it. So you'll remember it when it's n very soon to be covered in crap. Again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Four months from now, I'll be tripping over shit again. Um, yeah, you, and yeah, then you uh, take that picture, frame it and hang it in the bedroom. Right, right. That'd be like the 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 little art deco thing in the room. Mm -hmm. Blow it up to the full size of the room and lay it over <laughs> the garbage. <laughs> Just a picture of the floor. <laughs> there you go. Uh, put a little hex map on it, you know, so we can actually like like play live people. Like, I'm going to move oh, here. Then I got, I got two moves, so I'm going to move here. Um, and then uh, we were me, me and my son were a little neighborly today. We cleared out our driveway from the eight inches of snow we got since last night and then noticed the 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 house across the street from us, they hadn't had their driveway cleared in like the last couple of snows. And I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to go over there and just clear their shit out because mm -hmm. why not, right? Come to find, well, well, we had it all cleaned out. We were actually, I was scooping up the last couple little bits of snow off the, off the path to their house and stuff. And uh, she comes pulling up from coming in, come home from work. And they're, they're an older couple and uh, he's in a wheelchair and, you know, um, and all the children live like down, down in Anchorage or whatever. Well, come to find out that their snowblower was in their shed and the shed was toppled over, like completely collapsed during the last windstorm. And it took their snowblower out with it. Oh, geez. So it's one of those things like I've just followed my intuition, like, let's go ahead and clear their stuff out. And then I found out, well, yeah, it's pretty good that I did because they were, she would have been out there, this, this 70 year old lady out there shoveling her driveway from eight inches of snow or whatever. Uh, you know, just one of those things that makes you feel good. So, yeah, absolutely. So, but, yeah, all of you out there, be, be neighborly. Help your neighbors. It's a family circus comic in here. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what we're all about. Just like you know, just smiling and, and making ourselves feel good and, and I growing live in our apartments. Inside. Yeah. Big. Hunt, hunt. I, live, I live in slum apartments <laughs> in the middle of El Cajon. I don't, uh, <laughs> I don't know my neighbors. I haven't looked at them in the eye yet. It's been two years. <laughs> you, you, you pass each other and one of you just steps off the side, depending on, you know, who's carrying more shit at the time. That's that, that, that gets that. Yeah. That's, that's the best you can hope for. Yeah. Yeah. You don't knock the other person out. <laughs> um, Hondo Tadpole in the chat room says that I just need to 3D print a new house every three months so that we can avoid cleaning. Um, <laughs> not I mean, if, you're, if you can 3D print a house, 3D print a robot that cleans the house. <laughs> Go there. <laughs> hey, that, that might that might be a little hard. All right. Um, how about you, uh, Curly? What, what has your week been like, man? Uh, so I'll share this with you guys. I was glad you guys mentioned uh, earlier that you're not drinking as much or whatever, or you don't as my show. Um, I don't know if I've shared this over here or if it's how public it's gotten, but um, I did this last year and I'm doing it again this year. Uh, I've been sober for a week. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, I uh, I piggyback. Uh, uh, I'm not religious in the least, but I, I piggyback Lent uh, every year to, to to pump the brakes on it, um, just to make sure that I can and 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 haven't uh, uh, haven't grown a crippling addiction to alcohol and. <laughs> and <whatnot. laughs> Uh, so I've been I've been doing that. That's that's my transition that's uh, been happening since Wednesday, uh, Ash Wednesday last week. Mm. Uh, as of yesterday, it would have been one week. So today is my what's eighth day mm-hmm. of uh, not having anything to drink. Um, last year I did it uh, without telling anyone because I was afraid of torpedoing my own brand as well as <laughs> failing horribly. Sober kids gaming, uh, yeah, that's not not nearly yeah, as fun. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Look at the bio Kyle comes out. He's like, what? <laughs> like, how dare? <laughs> Kill him! Kill Blasphemy! We found a shell. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no. So I hid it from everyone. One because I was terrified of failing uh, at my own challenge, and then two uh, because I'm scared of the brand. Uh, this year, I decided to just um, be open with everyone since everyone's been pretty cool about it. So who knows? Uh, I'm not going to like write anything crazy about it, but um, I am sharing the day by days as our channel goes on to my experiences with it. Um, I, I personally, I mean, my thing really, I think is uh, the interesting part is over with after I get to about five days. I stop really uh, desiring whatever I'm trying to quit. Mm. Um, I used to smoke cigarettes like 10 years ago. Uh, and when I finally broke that like five or six day period uh, after the last one, like it was like, oh, I don't really care for that anymore. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> cigarettes is an interesting one to me uh, because I had a huge habit of, of smoking cigarettes. Like I, I enjoy smoking. I really, I, yeah. like, I, I, I've got, you know, my vape here and non Nick yes. or anything else. I just enjoy smoking. But I found that I'm not with a person that can just go and have a cigarette and then, you know, socially and then move along with my life. Like it's that first one. And then, well, shit, I've already had one. Let me have 500 more. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, well, so, so, so we've discussed this many times with, um, with my world, like I, and this is probably super real talk. Like I, I, for cigarettes, one, I loved smoking. I love the concept of smoking. I found it romantic. I found it, uh, uh, something to like connect with ancients, humans, because we all smoked, you know, like, right. Uh, it was something weird like that, but I knew that that one had to stop at some point because I was having trouble sleeping. I had mm. a lot of coughing issues and stuff. And so, and this is me at like 25. So I was like, I got to stop. <laughs> you know? so, I, so I did. Oh, I made a conscious effort to do that. Yeah. Uh, but with the liquor, so then I, then I just replaced it with alcohol. Uh, uh, and uh, the, I, Again, I romanticize it a lot. I love, I, 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 I don't know how much you know about me. I don't really have, it doesn't have any uh, detractors in my life. Like I've learned to, 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 it's just part of my life. I drink, I drink excessively. I do very excessively to the point where people are terrified of the amount of actual liquor that goes into me. But I go to work every day. I don't have hangovers. I drink a lot of water. I, my interpersonal relationships are fine. Right. Like everything is, <laughs> is okay. The, the reason that most people hit, you know, quote unquote rock bottom and then stop uh, aren't there for me. Uh, minus the fact that I can't get away from the fact that at some point it's going to kill me. Right. Uh, so I wish I could be that guy. And this is what you were, you, you were getting. At. I wish I could be that guy that like, I can go to a bar and have like one beer or a couple beers. And then that'd be cool for like a week. Right. But if I do that, like I can, I can either stop or I can go all day. Like, yep. <laughs> so for me, I, I, I'm hoping to, to find a, a careful medium, but I don't know how to do that because in all honesty, what's coming out of this, process is that i don't know if i can be that guy right i want to be that <laughs> but i don't want to stop drinking because it's so cool <laughs> <laughs> all the cool kids are doing it um uh, I'll yeah, yeah drugs i i i've i've self-identified as a person with a highly addictive personality like once i find something that feels good like i just want to keep keep going like it's the alcohol if i find a drink that i just absolutely love i'm just going to keep drinking it it's not going to stop um, so I, I'm the same way with the on off. Like I, I have certain things in my life that I've turned off because they will interfere with daily function because I enjoy them to the exclusivity of things that I'm supposed to be doing. Right. Um, like masturbation. Mm. Right. Right. I mean, do you know how hard it is to masturbate in like three minutes before your wife gets in the car? Like, <laughs> I, I mean, if you, uh, yes. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, of course, we can uh, and, all relate to that. And yeah. it's awkward. When, when your wife gets in my car. Yes, I know. Yeah, no, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, and it's always awkward because the kids are in their car with you. And it's like, you know, it's yeah, you got veggie never, tails on the stereo. Yeah, you know, it's, yeah. They're, they're, they're trying to watch it on their TV. And they're like, what the hell's dad doing? Yeah, it's, you know, you just got to, it's on or off. You can't be doing. Uh, Dad's fighting the seatbelt again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Damn it. 
Uh, Dad. How much are you going to adjust that, that steering wheel? Um, <laughs> it's just not in the right spot. It's, uh, uh, ah, there, it is, there it is. There it is. There it is. Uh, um, so another thing that I did this week, uh, I am a total geek for fact checking. So Snopes is one of my favorite websites ever. And I don't go there often and often because when I go there, that's like an entire day. That's like just a day <laughs> gone catching up on all the, all the, sh- all the random shit that's gone on since last time I was there. And yeah. I did that this week. I hit Snopes and was on there for about three hours and looked at the clock. It was three in the morning. I was like, you know what? I yep. should close this out and go to bed. I yeah, get, it's, um, go ahead. Go it, ahead. It, when, when I saw this on the, in the show notes, I was like, holy shit, because I did something very similar. It wasn't on, on Snopes exactly. Uh, but I was, so, all right. So let me, let me preface this. A few months ago, one of my friends added me to a group on Facebook that was all about flat earth theory. Mm-hmm. And, I thought he was sending me a joke site. Like <laughs> there's no way that this, you know, this can't be real. Uh, but the more I read it, these people fucking believe that shit. Mm-hmm. It's flat. And they've got this like fake set of evidence of, you know, here's why it's flat and all this other shit. Anyway, oh, tell so, more. <laughs> <laughs> the, the other night I, I had a, you know how Facebook occasionally sends you a notification like, Hey, somebody posted in this community you're part of. So I, I clicked on it like an idiot. I started reading through the stuff and I just kind of I I've made a mistake and clicked on comments on one of the posts and it was just like, you know, 143 replies or whatever. So I started going through that just oh seeing what these idiots are posting and there was a link to some supposed news site that was supporting some some conspiracy thing, right? So I clicked on that and it brought me to this like garbage ass conspiracy driven like supposed news site, right? GeoCity and site. Spent, this this, this spent, is borderline self harm. Yeah, no, I know, and I couldn't <laughs> stop. I was supposed to be going to sleep. Like I had to work the next morning. Here I am laying in bed for like two and a half, maybe three hours, even just. I I was just getting outraged and clicking on the next link. Like, <laughs> what the fuck are they going to say about this thing? <laughs> Click. <laughs> God damn it! No, there's no, there's no good down there because anything that you're trying to find, where like some kind of like uh, kindred spirit is yeah. just raging in the wrong direction, let, let me, and then you're just like you're helping the other side. Just stop. <laughs> just let me find any semblance of of reality anywhere in here, please. Any anywhere. Just oh no no. There's another fucking rage boner. Okay, let's move on to the next one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was so disheartening to me that how many people go to these websites and actually buy into the garbage. Oh my God! Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, you gotta put you gotta. Sometimes you gotta put the internet down. I'm sorry, it's gotta stop. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> exactly. I, I allow myself about maybe once a quarter. You know, once maybe um, I don't know, maybe twice a year or something like that. I'll 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 give myself a couple hours just to just a rage. So, oh God! So with that, uh, I'm gonna bring up an app that I found this week. It was actually one of the App Store apps of the day or whatever. It's called yeah, yeah. it's called Moment, and it's like a a white background with like this pure like this silly white flower thing. Okay, and I'm gonna try to show it on the screen there, and it's not gonna show up. It's that little almost white. pure white icon there. It's called Moment, and once you set it up, it tracks how it it monitors how you're using your phone. Hmm. So whether you're looking at the at the just the lock screen. Or if you're using certain apps or <laughs> staring at the lock screen. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> but it, lock screen. It, 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 it accumulates all this data. So you can look at like the last month history of, you know, oh, by the way, you've been on Facebook uh, 4,000 times the amount that you've actually been doing anything productive with your life. Uh, so I added that because I, I'm, I have this fascination with time tracking and I'm, I just don't have the willpower to, to do it because all the apps that they, they require, there's too much overhead to, to track your time. I don't want to spend time to track time. I want to track time. Um, <laughs> right. You know, I, I would love to know how much time I actually spend on editing the podcast that I do and how much time I spend playing oh. games and things like that. I, I would love to be able to quantify that in some manner. Uh, but it would take too much time to customize the, the shit. To the do the, the data you get from is that you spend too much time in the moment app looking <laughs> yeah, at the charts. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so um, so I, I downloaded that and uh, I, I just I'm curious to see what the results are. So like remind me in like two months and we'll, we'll go over what what my screen time on my phone is. And I, I think it's a free app. If anybody, like, anyone you should, you should like both to. do it. You should have. I'll, I'll do it. Shoot, I'll, I'll hit you guys up with information. I love yeah, statistics. That's, yeah, that's I would, I, and I, I'm, it's just one of those things. Like, I'm really curious as to if it provides any insight at all, and how often am I actually on Facebook for four hours at a time, going down rabbit holes that no one should ever go down. 
So my, my most recent rabbit hole was, uh, uh, I, I, one night, uh, this is, it was a couple weeks back, uh, drunkenly playing, I wanted to try and see if I could get into Civ six. And, uh, I opened it up and during the loading screen, it, it showed me like a little blurb of like just a fun fact about some city civilization. Hmm. And I was like, that's fucking fascinating. I didn't know that. And I alt tab from the game and I sat on Wikipedia and just kept clicking through years and years of, of like pre, uh, you know, like, like just early, early fucking man, uh, historical shit. Just, just, uh, oh my God, we're a fascinating fucking species. It's fantastic. <laughs> just all, all, all the shit that China went through going like through different dynasties and, 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 and rulers and shit. And way before, you know, any of the European stuff was doing crap with yeah. swords and shit. Oh, it's great. Great, but then it was four in the morning, and I was like, "Why?" <laughs> and I didn't, and I didn't even play the game. And well, it was yeah, still open. I, I was gonna say, for the record, it would have been four in the morning regardless, because that's how long how enrapturing <laughs> that game is. Like it just sucks you in. Every civilization, you, you're either a civ player or you're not a civ player. And I, that's one of my on off things. Like if I have a massive amount of time, I'll turn civ on, and I'm done. Like don't don't bother trying to. I, I'm that's I'm focused. Like I gotta get my my infantry across the river in less than four moves, or I die. You know, I'm like I'm stuck in it. You know, um, and, and then I'll go through like three four months where I was just turned off, and then I'll find out that there's an expansion. I'm like shit, I gotta get it. Oh, give me the thing, and then I'm <laughs> I'm stuck for a weekend. And then uh, I, like I love Civilization. I've been playing it since Civ One, and holy shit, I love the game. <laughs> but that's me. <laughs> I just all yeah. tapped to Wikipedia. That's I think I played Civ right. I think I played it right. <laughs> I got my money's worth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I used to be a Civ player, but then uh, I, I realized that I, I can't play it for like an hour. I'm going to play it for like eight hours at a time. So I just don't play it anymore. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 600 turns later. And then uh, to speak to your other topic, I have a, a close friend who I grew up with. Uh, I love him so much. He's a great man. Um, but I lived with him for like a six months in that during that period of time I got to know I got to know a little bit more about him <laughs> and uh and ever he smokes weed that man he, I remember the first time he, I remember I started I started treating it as a party favor so the first time he walked up to me and was like he wanted to show me a video about the hidden lyrics in, in Dr. Dre songs that mentioned chemtrails and how Tupac was trying to warn us about vaccines and how the earth is flat. And he had all, I mean, every conspiracy theory you can go down and he's like, yeah, man. Yeah. It makes sense. Right. Like, and I'm like, Oh, okay. Yeah. No totes. Like, yeah, no. So I, I remember every time he'd get to that, that state, cause it, uh, he would never, he, he never lets it out unless he's a certain type of either drunk or high. And we'd be at parties and I just, he'd get to that moment and I just, I'd be like, Hi, Julie. Hey, have you met you? You talked to Velasco, right? Like he's got something to say, like here, here, enjoy. And I just like unleash him on groups of people and, oh. <laughs> and I just walk away. I'm like, yeah, no, they were actually talking about what you were saying the other day about, you know, the, the, the chemtrails. And he's like, oh yeah, the water. And, and it was like, <laughs> oh, it's a good man, but oh, holy crap. Oh um, man. All right. so if, if you like websites that have conspiracy theories, uh, def- definitely do not go to patreon.com slash ritual misery because you won't find conspiracy <laughs> theories there. No, well done. Well done. No, you, you, you will not find conspiracy theories there. You will find other theories, uh, like theory on, on how the hell we make this, this program go. Um, how, how do we get to South by, Oh, that's right. We have patrons that help us out with that and make that possible for us. Yeah. Hell yeah. We love each and every one of our patrons. You guys are awesome. Uh, we also really love all of our subscribers on Twitch. Um, between those two groups and there's even some crossover there. Uh, you guys are the absolute best. Yep. Um, you showed us that you give a fuck by giving us a buck and, um, uh, everyone should do that. That's at patreon.com slash ritual misery. Yep. Um, now we have a little thing that we like to do that starts out like this. You've got 60 seconds. Get your mind right. It's time for hot takes on the Ritual Misery podcast. All right. So the the way this game works is, Curly, I'm going to give you a topic. and You are going to rant, rave, ramble, whatever it is you want to say about that topic until you hear the record scratch like that. And then you wait for your next topic. It's going to go about a minute. Are you ready? 
<laughs> All right. Shit, let's do it. <laughs> All right, Curly. Whiskey. Am I right? Oh, God, I love whiskey. Stop. Why? This is the worst time to ever bring up whiskey. There's a man over here trying to get clean, and you're dangling a bottle of whiskey in front of him. Whiskey is my uh, my kryptonite. I, I love all types, uh, even down to the plastic bottle whiskeys, all the way up to the beautiful Kill. things. Damn it. The, so uh, the sound effect gets stepped on by Skype. The Thanks, ducking. Skype. Yeah, sorry. Uh, I was just going to start yelling yeah. over it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> children, am I right? Uh, no. God, children <laughs> suck ass. Sorry, you're both breeders, aren't you? Right? <laughs> uh, Vidya games, am I right? Yay! Everyone loves video games. Uh, I play them constantly. Uh, they're great. Uh, they fill my life with joy. I share them with everyone. That's what everyone should do in their life. Welp. Am I right? D- <laughs> yes. <laughs> I am a big fan of the whelp. Uh, I, I guess I'll just fun fact with whelp is uh, just the sound that you make after a video game lets you down and you see the credits. Uh, that's how that, 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 that name started. We played a video game and it was like, Welp. <laughs> and then so we named the podcast after that because that's kind of what we go for. The Ritual Misery Podcast. Am I right? Absolutely. Thumbs up. You guys are great gentlemen and you guys are beautiful for putting on the show for everyone here. Uh, if you're not on their Patreon or not supporting them monetarily, you're dumb. There, I said it. They're not going to say it. <laughs> awesome. All right. Thanks for playing along, Curly. That was great. <laughs> I- I, I don't know if you noticed the pattern. I, I, th- I threw words in there that basically spelled out drunk kids gaming whelp. Oh, look at that. Um, that that's, no, but I, I was, that's the limit of Ken's uh, imagination and creativity. That's, that's as far yeah, as it goes. I, I spent all of my creative juices on that, and uh, I'm, I'm done for 2018. Um, so, <laughs> yes. guys, um, you know, creative quota. That about whelp, uh, where, where that name came from, because that was actually one of the questions that I was going to ask you. Uh, so yeah. as we mentioned at the top of the show, Curly is part of um, slash founder slash um, um, I don't know. So Drunk Kids Gaming. <laughs> if you go to drunkkidsgaming.com, uh, you can find everything, uh, all the links and the things for all of the of the things that DKG does. But I want to hear it from Curly. What the heck is Drunk Kids Gaming and why should I give a shit? Uh, it is my little part of the web. Um, it started off, I mean, God, it's, um, it's one of those things that like really genuinely began many, many years before the stream itself ever began. Um, I've, uh, I've always been kind of a tech nerd, not a kind of a tech, I'm fucking absolutely a tech nerd. I, I work in IT and, <laughs> I was, and I was gonna, computers I was, forever. I was about to stop you. <laughs> yeah. I was like, you yeah, know, I dabble. Like, look, look uh, you can say shit if you want to say shit, but don't be lying on the show. All right? <laughs> yeah, no, th- that's not my setup or anything. I'm, you know, I'm not, you know, nerd or anything. Uh, but, uh, when I was younger, I had a very, very specific experience, in my opinion, or very unique. I don't think it was terribly unique because a lot of people have been glomming onto it as something that they enjoy, which is what brings people out to the show. I, uh, when I was younger, we had um, uh, the the neighborhood, if you will. It wasn't necessarily the same apartment complex, but it was the streets that were around us, people that we went to school with, that were in walking distance and everything. And there was just us kids and us kids that became friends, and it was a large ragtag group of random people and people came and went and whatever. But the thing that was static is that we loved video games. A lot of us all kind of loved to play video games. And um, when it came down to it, most of us were all pretty poor, (laughs) piss poor, (laughs) if you will. Um, So when someone got a new console, it was a big deal Mm. because it was like, oh shit, Mark's got the Super Nintendo. We got to go to Mark's house to play all the Super Nintendo games. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I had the Sega Genesis and uh, I think I had the Dreamcast or whatever. And then like one of our friends had a 64 or whatever. And, um, so a lot of our experiences with any game, even especially even single player games, were all this shared experience where we go to someone's house and there'd be like five to ten people deep hanging out in a house watching someone play a Final Fantasy mm-hmm. or a Secret of Mana or whatever. And and gaming was communal. It was always this like a, we'd be playing a Tomb Raider and uh, she glitched through the wall and you'd see the whole world behind it and everything. And we'd all be like, oh, my God, remember that time when you glitched through the wall? And it was crazy. And, and is those, those situations never get recreated because you can tell that if you played a single player game by yourself in your in your room by yourself. But everyone's like, cool, great story that you had. No one else saw it, you know, like whatever. Um, yeah. 
I, I had I had been spending so much time uh, when I uh, right before Twitch actually started uh, just messing around with doing stuff on Skype and Google Hangouts and just the Internet in general, actually running your own little stupid RTMP website where I wanted to share my gaming experiences with people. And I had no idea how to do it. And, and it was it was before OBS <laughs> was the thing. Um, and. Over over the course of years of just dabbling around with that, eventually we kind of solidified on doing what other people are doing. Because I, I I got inspired when I first saw I think Man vs. Game uh, doing this, and I was like, this can be done. This is exactly what I always wanted to do. <laughs> like I wanted to share these experiences with. Uh, so Drunkards Gaming uh, is is the the name is basically uh, originally originally from me and my sister uh, who are uh, perpetually children. Uh, we're always going to consider ourselves uh, adult adolescences, uh, uh, and we love to drink and play video games and we wanted to share that. And so we started sharing that on things. And then eventually she, uh, you know, because of work schedules and life and everything had to do other stuff and couldn't be around as, as often as possible. But I decided to, at one point just make a pledge to myself to try to see if I could do this on a daily basis. And, uh, that was five years ago. This is the fifth year. It was four years ago, January 1st that I said, I'll go for a month. I'll do, Monday through Thursday, and then I'll do a Saturday stream, and I'll do four hours each day at the very least, mm. and that's what I'll promise for a month, and we'll see if I can if I can handle that while also working my full time job, and uh, I did it, and it was good, and now we're five years later, <laughs> and we're here. So Jeez. wow, yeah, that's that's pretty uh, that's pretty dedicated <laughs> to, uh, <laughs> to uh, streaming for your fans. That's uh that's man. That's really great. So tell us a little bit about how the community has grown and because it, it's more than just you and your sister and yeah. your, your neighborhood friends. Um, how, how's that journey been? So you get, you guys come from the same cloth. Uh, we're all diamond club here. Um, the, the, one of the greatest benefits I ever had when I started doing my stuff, uh, when I started it, it was very much again, just experimental. I wasn't trying to hit some kind of numbers or trying to even make it a thing or anything. Um, I was just trying to make it happen <laughs> and, uh, I was lucky, uh, I, I've had my fair share of course of, uh, you know, weeks of no viewerships, uh, when we started and everything, but I also had actual friends like diamond club friends that were like, Oh, I'll check your stuff out every now and then and people would pop in and out and I still kept doing it no matter what. And if it wasn't for those guys having that that branch off of that community i i don't think i would have continued doing it in the sense that i i did it the dedication that i did it at that point um and it gave me a re i mean you know you know brian brushwood and, and jury i mean those guys are the most inspiring sons of bitches in the entire world uh and so uh the community kept it going so our the what, what, what happened though as time went on is that like i think i think there was one time it was like a year into doing the streams uh jury came over uh, and we did a show for my apartment and he was like, we were like setting up the stream and there was, there was, we were doing pre-show kind of stuff. And he was looking at the chat and he's like, dude, there's no one from like diamond club in here. And I was like, Oh, I mean, Oh, Oh, weird. Like, <laughs> I guess that is true. Like some of these guys don't even know what you are now. Cause I just assumed that everyone's going to know who jury was and that's where everything came from. Yeah. But we had slowly just started picking up traffic of our own people. Um, but what's great is no matter what, uh, since the, since we seeded the the community the way that we did in regards to Diamond Club people, uh, we got the same kind of audience. We have a a rabid fan base of kids that uh, absolutely love to troll, but also are there for you when they need you or when you need them mm. or need each other. And uh, not to mention, Discord has helped amazingly. Uh, the, my, the my channel is only live and only live for four hours a day, but everyone that is. is anybody in the in the channel is in the discord talking all the time during the daytime about miscellaneous topics from your stock market crap to solar panels to you know anime and uh it's a place uh that people can call home i mean i, I i've spent oh, over the course of the five years i've gone up and down in regards to trying to, to to pigeonhole my my show into something like that that other people have been doing that makes you know makes it monetary success or whatever and I think the best thing I did was like a year or two ago. I just kind of said, fucking let's just do this and do it our way. And it's, I've never looked back. I've stopped trying to fit whatever Twitch wants. I've stopped trying to fit whatever I thought I wanted. And I've just been doing what I originally did, which is sharing games with people on a, on a base level. I mean, sitting there watching a game together and we're experiencing it together, come good or bad. This game might suck or, Oh my God, can you believe this game went so well? God this is awesome. 
And, uh, and then on top of that, just having a place that people can hang out and be a community with each other. And I, I think I can attest to it. I mean, the people that are in it, in the community, I think it's, it's the best place on the damn internet. Like I love these guys so much. And, and when people join it and people like you guys come into it, like it's, there's no even question. It's like, it's a, it's a love at first sight. It's the, it's, it's, you know, there's no, it's bros at first sight. Like it's just there. Like, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, and it's, it's interesting because, um, I, I didn't know who you were or what drunk kids gaming was like, let's say even a year ago, I, I was like, you know, somebody, I, I believe it was actually somebody at South by, um, might've been jury facts or somebody mentioned drunk kids gaming. And I was like, uh, okay. Yeah, I guess that's a thing. Right. And, <laughs> but then like uh, somebody else mentioned it. Uh, I don't know if it might've been Gelfling or somebody said something about DKG and I'm like, Okay, what the uh, fuck? Okay, this is a thing. This is like a real I, thing. This I, isn't like a one-off comment. This is a thing. I, so, I, re I remember he, he mentioned it on because it was a South by, and he, he mentioned it on the bus ride back to our Airbnb, and he was like, what the hell is drunk kids gaming? I was like, um, it's... Some, it's a, sounds illegal. It's, yeah, it was like, it was like <laughs> yeah. it's like, it's a dude that streams games, and like he's Diamond Club, and he's Frog Pants, and he's like this this little other community that, that he's got a bunch of people to watch him on Twitch. And then Kent was like, should we be on Twitch? And I was like, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was several months later that, uh, <clears throat> that we made that transition. Yeah. Um, but it's interesting. So anybody that's watching the video, if you look over Curly's right shoulder or well on our left as yeah. the viewer, there is a cutout of Curly. The, the and that was my, that, what I consider my first, First time meeting Curly was at Nerdtacular <laughs> last summer. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah that was one of those moments. That was a humbling fucking moment where it started. It started off like I almost was immediately brought to like mm, tears. Where like it it was it started off as a joke. It was like, oh man, like I think it was like Tom Merritt or or it was Veronica couldn't make it to something and they were like oh well we should bring cardboard cutouts and I was like that would be so hilarious like totally like make a cardboard cutout of them or whatever mm -hmm. and then I get these tweets that are like just blowing up my phone and I look over and I'm I'm at fucking nerdtacular <laughs> in the cardboard cutout and I'm and I'm there with the other cardboard cutouts of like Belmont and I'm like come on like that's ridiculous <laughs> to me and then and then immediately it changed to I think Cardboard cutout me is getting into more parties than I could have gotten into <laughs> at Nerdtacular. <laughs> like, and I'm like, well, they like cardboard me more than anyone. And then I never, uh, he's having more fun than I ever had. <laughs> yeah, that was a lot of fun being a part of that. I, I know I, I took several pictures, uh, especially with, with Jury Facts and Curly mm. and, uh, you know, putting those up on Twitter. And that was a blast. Yeah. It was, it was, uh, very, you, you, you were there for a, a very good time that you didn't, uh, that you don't remember. <laughs> yeah, well, I, well, join the club. There's a lot of us that don't remember the good time we had at uh, Snowbird. <laughs> the, 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 the height change plus the liquor consumption. Oh. Mm. Then if you hit Matsula's cigars. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah I'm, I totally, I, I, I missed the smoke, smoke monster. monster. Uh, I don't remember what I was doing, but I had something else going on that I, I couldn't make it. Um, oh, yeah, that's right. You did miss that. That's when that's when Brushwood like had to sneak us in because apparently like fire code or something like that. They could only let certain amount of people in. <laughs> yeah, so I knew Brushwood, that was going to happen. Yeah. So Brushwood like went around like through the back door and went around like snuck through the shadows and like took us like five at a time. Like through this secret path to go in the back. <laughs> way. This is my, 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 my one reasoning for not. Well, not my one reason. There was many reasons not to go to that Nertacular. The, the Nertaculars have been very welcoming, very fantastic. But it's grown. The, I've gone to prior to that one. I've gone to the three before it, mm. and it was very obvious that we were overdoing Snowbird, and we were we were putting them out big time. There was most people by the last time I had gone were staying down the hill because they couldn't get tickets or couldn't get rooms in the actual hotel, which blows chunks to have to drive up that mountain every day. Mm -hmm. And then right. stuff like Smoke Monster. Originally, when we went out there, it was like, oh, this place is open on Thursday. Okay, and we hit them with like fourteen people. And they were like, "Oh God, this is too many people." Blah blah. And then we were like, "Hey, let's let's next year let's um let's actually alert someone." And so we did. We we told them we're going to bring a group of people, but the group of people ended up being you know a hundred. You know, like it was just nasty, <laughs> and uh, they didn't have the staff for it and everything. But we tipped well, and we we thought it was well. I can only imagine what it, I, the, the, you saying fire code exactly what I imagined it was going to be like the year that I didn't go, <laughs> like. 
Um, yeah, it was it was pretty amazing. Yeah, it did get a little crowded, and uh, but I think they, I think Scott uh, Scott Johnson did a good job preparing the the uh, event staff for what was to come <laughs> because uh, you know he everybody knew that this was going to be the last one. Well, supposedly, we'll see what the future brings, but everyone knew that this was going to be the last one. So everybody that had never been before, including Amos and I, uh, we did our very best to get there. And, um, it was, yeah, like it, yeah, it was, it was huge and it was awesome. And, uh, what a good, what a good time. They, they never disappoint. And, and, and Scott puts on a great show and he does his best, but yeah, every, every year it's, uh, I remember it's always like three in the morning and there's like some, some poor staff hotel person, like emptying a trash out and, and I'm like, hey, how's it going? And he's like, guys, are so you guys are just like a lot of people, man. Just a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Hey, hey, you know, those summer hires had all summer to prepare for it. That's all I'm saying. They- <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which I'm, I'm happy they're moving. They're doing the Vegas thing. That's what, kind of what we always th- thought we were going to do. It's it's central to everyone else. Uh, it'll work out, I think. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, it's kind of the uh, the the roving nerdtacular now. I think. Oh yeah. Um, so this weekend was a big weekend for the box office. Uh, yeah, dude. Black I don't Panther. think anything did, did anything release this week. Uh, only <laughs> only one movie that mattered. <laughs> um, yeah, no. Yeah, uh, Curly, did you did you go see Black Panther? I haven't seen it yet. Mm. Oh man, well I, I know I bet Amos hasn't seen it either. I have. You oh, saw monsters. okay, so this is only like the second maybe third MCU movie that you've seen. Is that right? Um, closer to like the fifth out of 22 or whatever. Um, but this is the first one of the official MCU I've seen in the theater. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, and, and uh, not knowing like, you know, every single movie's plot lines and every character and everything like that. Uh, what, what was your impression? Uh, so two things. One, I thoroughly enjoyed the story itself. It's a little bit predictable because you kind of, you start the movie kind of knowing the end, but whatever. Um, I I really enjoyed the movie. Uh, My other thing is they had to have had like the most amazing anthropologists on staff that, that were studied and literate in African culture because they stepped so close to the line of offending an entire continent you know, because anyone like they were all they were all doing like African dances and these traditional things from from Africa, and mm-hmm. you do that stuff just a little bit off, and you piss off an entire fucking continent. Like the oh sure, you know, yeah, like, yeah. like it was it, it was borderline, but they nailed it. They they it, it was great, <laughs> it was great. And anytime I can leave a theater and my wife is like, those chicks were hot. I'm a happy dude. <laughs> like, because uh, because yeah, because they were they were they were hot. Um, yeah, I mean, everyone, everyone in that movie looked really good, um, man or woman, like everyone was attractive. Um, everyone put forth a, a, a wonderful performance. The, the portrayals of the characters were great. Uh, the set dressing, the CG was, yeah. was beautiful. The whole movie was just beautiful and the story was great. I really liked the, the underlying, like not hidden messages, the, um, slightly, slightly less than overt sometimes over <laughs> messages yeah. um that, that were that were playing out through the through the plot and the story and uh i don't know it was great curly you need to get out there and 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 check it out i yeah, no, i i've heard nothing but fucking crazy positive stuff about it and and i i just recently went on a, a big marvel binge because i had realized that uh i had the last marvel movie i had seen was the first avengers and <laughs> i hadn't seen anything oh. since then I was like, I wonder if they ever kept doing those movies. And I was like, oh, let me go look. Turns out oh, there's shit. a laundry oh. list. Yeah. Uh, I, I've, th- this movie was the first time, because I've seen both of the Guardians of the Galaxy. I've seen them a couple times each. And um, I saw the first two Iron Mans. And maybe it's because I watched Iron Man first and I just hate Robert Downey Jr. That might have been what set me off in the whole <laughs> anti-MCU thing. Um yep. It doesn't help that my wife thinks he's super hot, but I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure everybody can, thinks he's super hot. Except, for, except for me, I think he looks like a like a dried penis with a uh, little <laughs> ha- with, with some cum dried hair on top. Um, 
Hey, maybe that's what we're into. Hey, uh, that's and, your and, thing, man. And, that's the end. That's I, in there. I am not. I'm not a. I'm. I'm. I'm not a, a, a freak shaman here. Um, but yeah. a- acid wash cum <laughs> dribbles. <laughs> what do we do? Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> but th- this is the first movie that that made me sit down because Garden of the Galaxy were essentially self reliant. They were. They told their own story. It wasn't sure. overly involved with anything else until the end of the second one. Um, and even then, it's like only kind of involved. Yeah, it just kind of eluded. Right. Yeah. Uh, this is the first MCU movie that I've watched that made me want to watch more MCU movies. Mm. Ah, okay. And that's probably not good because I'm going to go from watching this excellent CGI yeah. to watching the, the shitty Iron Man CGI again. <laughs> yeah, I, I, that's not, I wouldn't call it shitty. I, I, yeah, I don't know. Um, most of the MCU movies, in my opinion, have been really good. There's been a couple of them that are, I would consider forgettable. Right. Uh, like, fortunately, Iron Man 3 <laughs> is definitely one of those. that uh, I don't even remember what the plot of that one was because it was kind of shitty and forgettable. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, seems, most of it seems to be a lot of those Iron Man movies than compared to the rest of them. But I'm just like, okay, yeah, I get it. Uh, I get it. Yeah, you, <laughs> at least you've the seen money. the Guardians of the Galaxy movies. Those are, those are some of the best. I, I think... If you enjoyed those, I think you'll really like Ant Man. Um, I actually have um, seen Ant Man. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and uh, the Captain America movies have been really well done. All three of them have been excellent. Yeah, in my I mean, I they, we, they leave those. his plot into almost all the other ones, and I, I had the benefit of watching them all like back to back in order over the course of a couple of weeks, hmm. and uh, got to see the, all the nuances and all the the plot spinnings. And then I watched the necessary television episodes of whatever I needed to see. And mm. it was good. It's good. They're, they're building something fun. I, I'm a big lore guy, as I said, so I enjoy yeah. what they're doing with it. Yeah. It's, it's definitely something I'm going to have to sit down and do. It just, I, I, I'm, 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 I'm too busy trying to do too many other things that I'm not involved enough in for my own liking and too involved in for my wife's liking. So I'm trying to have this delicate balance of, of all the stuff I want to do when I retire next year and preparation <laughs> for retirement's a bitch. So, um, eventually I will sit down and watch the MCU. Uh, and this, this movie, if nothing else sealed the fact that I will be watching the other movies just because this one was so good. Yeah. Right on. Right on. Um, something that I'm looking forward to here in a couple of weeks is, um, daylight saving. Fuck you. Uh, it's freaking <laughs> forward. Cause I just, I love waking up early and if I can get up what an you, hour I mean, earlier, just- does Arizona uh, come back to California time or California time goes to Arizona time? What, um, which one are you in? What's all, like? all of the time zones go to fuck you time. That's what it is because time <laughs> yeah, zones are goddamn stupid. Um, time it's zones are stupid. And then daylight savings time is just even worse. It's like the worst of the, the bad. It's, it's, it's the stupidity of time zones to the power of stupidity of time zones. That's that it's, it, yeah, oh, well, pisses I mean, me we've, off. And we've discussed before, like, I, I don't have a problem with time zones necessarily because, like, I like to eat lunch at noon. If I'm in yeah. Japan or I'm in California or I'm in Alaska, like, I want to eat lunch those, at noon. Noon is when the sun is high. Those you know I mean? need to make sense. You have to say, you know, afternoon but, and but see, even, evening. Even then, noon in Alaska isn't noon because the time zone is so, like, transmorphed over that oh, no, sure. like, like, noon as in the, 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 the the, was the, the zenith of the sun or whatever? Okay, so you actually, went too far before. north. That's actually, our fault. That, 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 that actually you happens to like that far off the equator. That, that happens at like uh, eleven o'clock or ten thirty or something. Like noon isn't noon here. It's Are, aren't there areas where the sun stays in the sky for like six days and shit? Like um, is there weird stuff that happens up there? <laughs> yeah. Well, so we are uh, right around right around the end of May, early June. Uh, we will not have darkness again until August. Humans, that's a video game fucking preface. That's the back of a video game story, okay? That's not something that's supposed to be on the brochure for the city you live in. Um, so, oh, so we don't get darkness for seven more months. <laughs> watch, your, watch your crops grow, everybody. Uh, I, 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 I found this, this article on Ars Technica. It's actually a little bit old. It's a couple weeks old. Uh, Daily savings time isn't worth it, European Parliament members say. Uh, the European Union says holdover from post-World War I efficiency efforts isn't relative in today's world. And I couldn't agree more. It, I agree if, with that. If we, yeah. if we can't get to a universal time zone all around the earth where we're not doing this time change bullshit when we're going from location to location, the least we can do is stop fucking with the times we're using. <laughs> like it you, don't does, know, you don't know when the mountains are two hours ahead of you or one hour behind uh, and you. If, or if, yeah, and if you're in a place like Arizona or like Indiana used to be, where you didn't shift times, you shifted time zones. 
Yeah. Like, oh, it's just, it's so mm-hmm. stupid. And I'm glad that there's at least, even if it doesn't go anywhere, at least there's a major political body, a major uh, governmental body that is considering how stupid this bullshit is that the enti- almost the entire globe does twice a year. Yep. 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 And, and then the kicker God. is at the bottom of the article, they're like, oh, well, if we do stop, you do stop changing times, we'll just stick to the summertime. Yeah. Well, and that's, you know, that's the thing too. They did point out also that Russia stopped using daylight saving time and they went with summertime and then switched back to wintertime or, or something like right, that. Right. Right. Yeah. Apparently it wasn't working for them because the year, the all, all year offset in the winter really fucks it up, even though it's nice in the summer. Yeah. Or something like yeah. that. Yeah. But, but either way, it's, it's a fucking mess. And I, I hope, yeah. Just get, <laughs> I mean, living in, living in, in California, I mean, the, the change is dramatic. The difference between an hour when, when it does change is all of a sudden six o'clock where most people drive home from work was sunny. And then tomorrow it will be dark as fuck. Hmm. And you do that to Californians and they crash their cars constantly into each other, <laughs> into the moon. It is just the worst in the world. And, and, uh, and, so I, and, I hate it. And it's not the traffic is any worse. They're just like, ah, oh, fuck the time. <laughs> They're just confused. They're like, why is it I'm driving? Why? And then they smash into each other. Like, why'd you get in your car if you couldn't see? It's, it's very awkward. Yeah. Headlights. What? I, I got to work. I got to put lights on my head. What? What are you talking yeah, about like, right what now? Is this? No, no, I need the car to have lights. I don't need headlights. I need car lights. <laughs> it's raining. They treat it like a slip and slide. They just fucking, like, let's go 90 now. Let's go 90. It's fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Especially on the, on, the on, on California highways, because you never know when construction is just going to randomly pop up. I have, to, I have to drive only 11 miles to work every day. Mm. And I, you'd think I wouldn't have road rage stories, but I have the worst. It's just so insane. I'm like, how do you crash? It's, you, the people that drive this road drive it every day. It's not interstate. It's not like it's no one else is on this road, but daily drivers and y'all fucking decide to fail every single time <laughs> the fucking earth gets darker yeah. and I can't understand it. <laughs> like, well, one of the, one of the things that we constantly talk about on this show is that uh, I, I live in Wasilla and I work down in Anchorage. There's exactly one road that goes between the two and Alaska drivers can't drive in inclement weather. They can't. It's it's impossible for an Alaskan driver to drive. And uh, I'm waiting to catch it myself. Like I, I know it's a disease that happens up here, and I'm, I'm it's it's got to be communicable. Um, but yeah, it's it's ridiculous up here. And it's but then in Hawaii, there is like there's five routes to get there, but there's all is like four surface streets or one highway. So 16 miles would take me 48 minutes every morning. Yeah, which averages out to about 20 miles an hour. It's so stupid. Yep, that's Island's part because uh, Okinawa was exactly the same. Yeah, it's like just give us. Get, they should have just off off island roads, just a highway that goes around the outside. <laughs> that just kind of like covers, <laughs> like a belt, belt. Sorry. the, the off island beltway. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey man, uh, we uh, Curly is not the only friend we have on Twitch. Uh, the have a drink people. Uh, uh, they finally got affiliated, and I can tell you how it happened. Um, um, because we told people to go, go follow them. Kind of. I mean, pretty close. We did say that and they did gather a follower because of that. Um, you guys and, got sway. Oh. Yeah. And, and then the next day in the DTNS chat room, I sat there and berated everybody in chat room until they finally got their 50 and they ended up with like 58. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. And then, uh, uh, two days later they got their invite. So <laughs> that's, uh, yeah, no, that's, that's the story of how I got to 300, uh, subscribers on YouTube. I, I never actually pushed for YouTube, but I was like, I was at 294, and every time I'd get a follower for months, every time I get a follower, I'd lose a follower on, <laughs> yeah. on YouTube. And I was like, I don't really care, but just make the goddamn number even, please. And I was at, I was at, uh, I think it was at uh, the LA, uh, or was it, it was in San Francisco actually? It was it was a live uh, Diamond Club or Night Attack uh, thing, and I was just hanging out with like uh, Night Attack people, and they were like, Oh yeah, Curly, we love your stuff. And I'm like, Do you follow me on YouTube? Like. I know I can get fucking six of you right now to follow me on fucking YouTube. Someone do it. Like do it now. <laughs> like in front of me. There there <laughs> might there, there might be shots involved, goddamn it. Fucking make it happen. <laughs> yeah. Um but yeah, oh, they, they got they got they got their affiliation and uh they're really happy for those guys. They deserve it. Uh um looking forward to doing more collab work with them. Oh, definitely. That's yeah, that is absolutely gonna happen. And if you guys for whatever reason have not seen their show, 
uh, please head over there and check them out. It's Have a Drink Show on Twitch. Uh, that's I believe that's their Twitter handle as well. Just check them out. Um, they are absolutely fantastic. Amos, do we have a... Um, Speaking of have a drink, do we have a clip from them this week? We do, and I'm glad we remembered this week because it's actually kind of old, but I kept forgetting. <laughs> right. So that's that's how that happens. Actually, we well we had we had oh hello beard. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, that, 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 yeah. He's uh he's he's yeah he's he, and he was he was at Nertacular too. He might you might have gotten a, your picture taken with him already. <laughs> it's probably yeah. signed the back of the thing, <laughs> and I followed. Um, okay, and uh, let me hit the old video player, and we'll play this, even though it's a little old, so take it with a grain of salt, but here we go. Hey, Ritual Misery. Christopher here from Have a Drink. We had a blast on New Year's Eve and hope you all did as well. I want to start the new year off with uh, something a little out of the ordinary. Usually we don't like to talk about local beers too much because not everyone can find these beers. But I just couldn't help myself. Uh, so tonight I am drinking Pteranodon from Urban Artifact. This is a barrel-aged sour ale with peach added. Comes in at 8.8% ABV at a 4.46 out of 5 on untapped. The reason I wanted to talk about this beer is that it is a spontaneous fermentation ale, meaning that they used a naturally occurring yeast strain to inoculate the beer. Now, due to sanitary concerns, they could not use the old Bavarian technique of simply opening up the entire roof off of the brewery and letting whatever yeast blows in blow into the batch. So what they did is set up small yeast traps all across Cincinnati, and out of the hundred or so yeast strains that they were able to collect, only about four were suitable for brewing beer. And let's go ahead and see what they were able to do with those. So it's really sour and tart on the nose. Not much peach coming through. Oh, but the peach gives this a lovely flavor. It's like a uh, sea salt custard. Like there is this unexplainable saltiness to it that is absolutely delightful. So uh, remember, you guys can catch us Saturdays at 9 p.m. Eastern at twitch.tv slash have a drink show. Thanks, guys, and we'll see you next time. And that's that. <clears throat> yep. Gentlemen, uh, those are beer. awesome. That was, that was Chris from Have a Drink. Yep. Uh, he's pretty great. It's him and three other folks, and they're all awesome. And it's not that he knows his beer; like all of them, that's what the show is. They 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 pick a theme, they pick beers for it, they explain the theme and how, like, why that certain type of beer, or whatever, like the history of it and how it's made, all that kind of stuff. And then they taste test different beers of that type of beer. Um, yep. and yeah, it's and just a great show. And then they're also doing a news show now because they got some Patreon levels getting taken care of, so they do a, a new a weekly news show as well. Yeah, definitely. And and they're not always beer. They <laughs> primarily focus on beer, but they also do any kind of drink. So sometimes it's been like whiskey or something like that, but it's not even always alcoholic beverages. They've yeah. done teas. Um, I, I'm not sure if they've done a coffee episode yet, uh, but they do all sorts of stuff. Um, just check them out. Yeah. Have a drink show. Have a drink show. And it, it's uh, yeah, patreon.com slash have a drink show. And uh, go, go follow them if you haven't already. And well, shit, man. I love having affiliated podcasts that are just made of good people. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah people, so people, one last people, thing that I want to throw out there before we start wrapping this thing up <laughs> you is just, that you just walked all over Curly. <laughs> That's fine. I didn't oh, say anything. Bad. Skype <laughs> I like, forgot. completely muted him out because I didn't even hear him trying to talk. <laughs> uh, Go so, ahead. Um, no, no, fine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, but, well, uh, uh, we love you too, Skype. Okay, Ken, go ahead. All right, I just want to throw it out there once again that we are going to have a Diamond Club meetup in Austin, Texas on the 8th of March. Uh, Darwin's Pub on 6th Street. Um, we're not going to tell you the address. Just Google it because that's what we can do with the supercomputers in our pockets. Uh, it looks like 6 p.m. on the 8th of March. That's a Thursday mm -hmm. down at Darwin's Pub. It's going to be a Pacific blast. time or is that uh, mountain time? It's uh, uh, cent that's cent 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 central? central? Yeah, it's central. I'm it's local just, to Austin. Uh, is that, well, how is that uh, the, uh, to the to the mean uh, Greenwich mean? Uh, 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 that's that... uh, UTC plus forty three. I think um, okay. you go you around twice. <laughs> 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 oh my god! Uh, anyway, it's gonna be a great time. Uh, it, it's always a wonderful time. But uh, you know, this year we're gonna play some games. We're probably gonna live stream at least some of it. 
Um, it's going to be awesome. CJ, the the wonderful proprietor of Darwin's, is in contact with us. He's going to reserve he's, an entire section for us. He's um, uh, he's promised to only yell at us once this time. Because last year he yelled at us like three times. <laughs> well, yeah, but I mean, we were trying to like, break his audio equipment yeah. at the time. So, and, and I say us as in me and Kent, not anybody else. He was just yelling at us. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, okay, maybe Roberto. I think uh, I think Roberto got yelled at. Again. <laughs> you, you have to yell at Roberto. That's a part of no it's, Roberto. Yeah, that's just part of South by. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that's gonna happen. That's gonna be awesome. And uh, hey, next week we have Kathy Berry coming on. Um, that is a name that most diamond clubbers are not going to be familiar with. Yeah. Um, she is fantastic. Okay. You guys know Richard Gunther, right? Mm. Longtime listeners of this show are quite familiar with him. He's an old friend of the show. Um, Amos and I are real good friends with the guy. In fact, Amos, uh, you're, uh, you do a podcast with that guy, right? Yeah. Yeah. We'll talk about that here in a second. Okay. Um, Awesome. Well, anyway, one of Richard's best friends in this whole world is Kathy, who is going to be our guest next week. We have met her at South by Southwest for the last three years, Mm -hmm. and she is one of the coolest, smartest, most fun people that I have met in Austin, Texas. Not that she's always there for South by. (laughs) Um, and we, she's been promising to come on the show for years now. We were like, you know what? We can't do another South by actually Richard told us you can't do another South by Southwest without having her on the show, talking to her about how you're going to have her on the show. So I I texted her and I was like, you know what? You're going to be on the show on March 1st. And she's like, okay. Yeah. So that's all you got to do. Yeah. Yeah, you lock it in. (laughs) Yeah. Cause we, we've asked her several times and she's like, oh yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah. We'll definitely do that. So now we figured it out. <laughs> he is just saying, hey, you're doing this and it's this date. This date and you're doing it. Yeah, done. <laughs> yeah, she has no idea what she's going to do on the show. So if you have ideas, go ahead and tweet us at Ritual Misery. Uh, give us some ideas on ways to harass her to make sure that she comes back every year for uh, for, for another South by episode. Uh, guarantee it's going to be fun because she's never done a podcast before. Like yeah. not, not, not on video. She, I think she's done a, a, a one or two on audio, but never video, never live. So it's, it's going to be an experience for her. Yeah, it's going to be great. Um, Curly, where can people find out more about you now that we've already said, you you know, drunk kids gaming about 483 times. Uh, if you could <laughs> well, say it like one or two more times to add a little legitimacy to it, we'd really appreciate that. It's very simple. You just go to drunk kids gaming, anything on the internet. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you can find my show. Uh, the main stuff is that is that the, is the Twitch website, um, twitch.tv slash drunk kids gaming. There is the main website. No one ever uses those anymore. Uh, you can also email the show. No one ever does that anymore. Uh, if you actually want to find out what's going on with me personally, uh, I mainly tweet or I hang on the discord. Really the discord is where you want to hang out. So if you do want to get there, you can either go to the Twitch page or to the drunk kids gaming website, dkgtv.com. And there's a click link for the discord, which will get you there. And, uh, you can hang out with all those kids. Don't be afraid to talk. There are lots of rooms and lots of simultaneous conversations going on. Um, but yeah, we're gonna have a blast this weekend. We're doing, um, as I mentioned here earlier, the whole couch co-op sharing experience stuff, Secret of Mana has been remastered for the new age of kids, and uh, it's a three-player RPG. Mm. Uh, not getting the best of reviews, but regardless, it's a fucking sit around your your living room Saturday morning and play with your bros. And uh, we've been playing through it with my two bros uh, here, and we're going to continue doing it this weekend. Uh, and then we also have the podcast. And if I can convince my friend, we're going to do more D&D shit on the stream. Nice. But, whatever god D D is one of those things that when i'm playing i love it when i'm setting up i hate it oh god like, well i mean for setup for us it's like four cameras it's five microphones the mixer yeah. and everything and i'm just and talking about the game the itself like just setting up the game <laughs> just getting people yeah, to I commit setting up a stream for it <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually started doing what i uh, mm. i call the blitzkrieg uh D, where mm. You uh, essentially whoever's going to be DM sets up a, an adventure, and the adventure has to be able to wrap up in about um, uh, two to two and a half hours. That's that's the max limit. So the DM walks up to the table. Of course, this is all fictionalized in my head, but uh, it doesn't work out this way in real life. Although I tried and it worked out pretty well. But anyway, you walk up to the table of players and you throw an index card down. The index card has your limitations. What level the characters are playing at if they can or cannot play any specific races or classes, uh, anything that's prohibited, uh, anything like that. Like it gives them the baseline and um, they develop their character from there. They have 30 minutes to develop their character, to roll stats, wow. to buy equipment, everything, 30 minutes to include a background story. 
Uh, if it's not on the sheet at the end of 30 minutes, it doesn't exist. So <laughs> if you had a note sheet with all your money on it and all the shit you had bought, but you hadn't transferred it to your sheet and your character sheet yet, the, that, that gear and that money doesn't exist. You're walking around D&D D- 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 boot camp. Is yeah, great. <laughs> but you only had 30 minutes. So you didn't have time to min max shit. You, know, you didn't have, you had to create a, yeah. a basic concept and make that character happen. And then once that 30 minutes was over, your DM had two and a half hours to run the adventure. So it's a three yeah. hour block. It's start to finish complete adventure. Uh, you walk in with nothing. You leave completed. And that way you don't have this. Or dead. Yeah. I, I, I need another week to flesh out my character design. Uh, no, no, no. You got 30 fucking minutes. I dig it. Um, yeah. And uh, the, game is, the game is fun to play. But even as a DM, even as a seasoned DM, you'll still get like caught up in trying to make the world too big. It gives you an opportunity to focus on you know, yeah, making something smaller and concise and playable versus feature creep and never yeah, it yeah exactly you, you basically got a you, you have in two and a half hours you have time for a couple small conflicts a little bit of a story development and a major battle and that's it that's all you got sure. um and that's with seasoned players if you're playing with the noobs then you got to tone all that way down but uh yeah. but yeah Wait, that's, what spells can i use yeah can, can, uh, can i use this spell three times three times what's my what's my spell save <laughs> Isn't that a cantrip? <laughs> or, or, or in case, in Kent's case, uh, what, what die do I use? Um, yeah. <laughs> Which we, one? We might, we, test, we might get into that story in the post show. It's <laughs> always a D twenty. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> well, yeah. Now, yeah. now it almost always is. But back then, I'm, even the D useless yeah. was useful. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, Kent, where can people find you at, man? Yeah, check me out on Twitter at rm underscore del noche i'm pretty much del noche everywhere else um if not del noche 77 is it's one of those three <laughs> what about you Ames? uh you can find me on twitter at ethan kane and you can follow the show on twitter at ritual misery you can submit ideas on our subreddit ritual misery you can find all these links and more ways to support the show and give feedback at our website ritual misery.com we are live every thursday hold on i gotta hit the little button here uh, we are live every Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific on DiamondClub.tv and Twitch.com slash Ritual Misery. Thank you so much to Kevin Cloud for allowing us to use your music. Thank you for listening or watching. For Kent, for Curly, for me, and for you, this has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. See ya. The audio is here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely the audio listeners. <laughs>